Okay, so stopping by woods on a snowy evening. Uh, basically, this is sort of one of those poems that's very characteristic of Frost, which includes a lot of attention to natural detail and sort of discusses the sort of relationship between humans and nature. Okay, so first I'll just talk a bit about the context. Uh, let's think 1923. It's a time where sort of there were new ways of looking at the established ideas and challenge tradition. So that's a bit about context, don't really need to talk about that, but yeah. Okay, summary, basically summarising the, the story, it's pretty short. Uh, there's this traveller, he stops on a journey um, by horseback to gaze at the beauty of the winter landscape. Uh, the snow is falling in the woods um, with sort of a frozen lake nearby. Uh, he's distanced from his human dwelling, um, and this is a sort of unscheduled stop, and he realises he has to return to his journey because he has certain responsibilities to fill. Um, he'll le he leaves reluctantly, but he's tempted to stay, but acknowledges the pull of the obligations and considerable, there's considerable distance travel before they can rest for the night. Okay, so we've got this sort of form and structure. It consists of four almost identically constructed stanzas. Um, all lines are iambic with four stressed symbol syllables. Um, within the four lines of the stanzas, the first, second, and fourth lines rhyme, and the third line doesn't and sets up the rhyme for the next stanza, if that makes sense. Um, the exception to the pattern comes in the final stanza, uh, where the third line rhymes with the previous two and is repeated in the fourth line. Uh, and obviously you can talk about what that suggests, uh, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, I've got this iambic tetrameter. Um, the sort of metric patterns of the poem sort of sounds very musical if you sort of listen to it. And when the lines vary from the established pattern, it kind of emphasises the importance of that particular line. Uh, okay, so the title. The title is very important. Stopping by woods on a snowy, snowy evening. Uh, the title reveals the place, setting and the theme. Uh, you know, it's uh, about pausing and reflecting to help us re-enter life with new understanding and a sense of direction. You know, stopping by woods. Uh, and the setting yeah, seems to indicate calmness and tranquility, uh, but also could kind of create an eerie kind of alien landscape. And obviously there's this sort of un unremarkable nature of the title. It's very sort of conversational and matter of fact, and that kind of sets the tone of the poem as sort of steady and conversational in style. Okay, so the setting. Um, we've got the woods, which kind of symbolise this sort of, you know, usually this kind of wilderness and perhaps some kind of madness. Um, you could see woods as being sort of part of this sort of entrapment, maybe, but maybe a push. Uh, the village, what does that symbolise? Kind of society, civilization, duty, sensibility, responsibility, things like that. Uh, the woods symbolises um, the very opposite of what the village does. You know, the woods could symbolise attraction and restfulness, seductivity, seductiveness, uh, you know, this sort of lovely, dark, deep kind of place. And, you know, it's just like to rest too long while the snow falls could be to lose one's way, to lose the path. It could be to freeze and die. That's what you could say through that. So it could be dangerous as well. Um, I mean, the wood really represents for man this sort of rest and also could death and nature and beauty, solitude as well. So if we look at kind of the characters like the narrator, um, in the opening lines, the story is being told from the speaker's point of view. The, the way he talks is very, the way he talks is very um, self-conscious about sort of how he is. And he sort of has this idea that he feels like he shouldn't allow himself to give in to the desire to stay there. And you could argue there's some kind of sexual dimension to the way he sort of says everything, but you have to argue that. And then you could just look at the, the character of the horse, um, have this sort of horse that's in a hurry. Um, it needs to be in a place of business, which is the farmhouse, um, in order to make sense of the whole brief step. Okay, and there's there's a lot of sort of oppositions in the thing. There's this idea of man versus nature, masculine versus feminine, emptiness versus fullness, business versus pleasure, movement versus stopping, society versus solitude, and maybe life versus death. Okay, so I'm just going to get into the thing. I mean, you could argue, could the poem in general be used as a euphemism for suicide? Uh, it starts with, whose woods are these? I think I know. Um, and the use of this sort of inverted syntax, um, 
the word order is very confused, and this could be taken to represent a confused mental state, perhaps. Um, it's very vague, unspecific, and he's not thinking straight. His house is in the village, though. So, is this his own house? Is it this sort of third-person narrative, and maybe um, the protagonist maybe not recognising himself? He could be this sort of confused state of mind, or maybe it's just, you know, the literal thing. And then we have this, To watch his woods fill up with snow. Uh, snow, you could be taking that uh, as a metaphor to represent forgetting things. You know, this sort of hazy snow. Um, and then this, uh, between the woods and frozen lake. And woods could be taken to represent the subconscious, the sort of deep, dark kind of thing. If you think in a sort of Freudian sense. And the frozen lake, you know, is sort of dark with an unknown depth. And the life within it is very sort of constricted. Okay, and then you have this... Uh, the darkest evening of the year. Darkest is a superlative. It's, you know, it's the darkest. Um, is this, you know, is he saying it's darkest evening of the year because it's winter? Or is it a metaphor saying, you know, it's the lowest point in his life? You know, the end is fast approaching. Is he going to die? Is it, you know, darkest in a moral sense? Yeah, you don't know. Um, okay, so then there's um, where he says to ask if there is some mistake. Uh, and that's just before... You know, he gives his harness bells a shake. Um, we have uh, two masculine endings. We have a shake and mistake. Uh, masculine endings um, end with a stress symbol, uh, syllable. Uh, and the poem has a sort of phonetically drowsy feel, as if the protagonist is running low on energy. You can sort of see it like that. Uh, and then we have uh, of easy wind and downy flake. Um, here we have this sort of assonance, which gives the poem a sort of mellow softer feel uh, which drifts in sort of peaceful world which you could say is death but it's some kind of this sort of calm peaceful thing and then the woods are lovely dark and deep so we have a list of three and you could argue that this is very ox oxymoronic um lovely and dark is what is that um perhaps it's some kind of dark embrace of suicide and death is he welcoming death in a kind of positive way um and and obviously here the rhyme scheme now changes and it starts to imply that there is some kind of change of attitude is he rethinking this suicide and it's but but i have promises to keep uh is that some excuse to escape death uh, and then he has this repetition of um and miles to go before i sleep and miles to go before i sleep um so obviously there's this already sort of really freudian kind of thing about this it's very this sleep like mantra it's drowsy eight syllables lullaby kind of feel um sort of emphasizes this whole idea of um confronting the denial um and everything sort of gathers meaning uh because he sort of believes he's going to die okay so yeah that is um stopping by woods on snow evening <laughs>